So uh, thanks for joining us live, and uh, we're into the very last one of our boudoir kind of session. Uh, so today we're talking about sales and album design and so on. But if you haven't gone backwards to watch them, remember when you click onto any of our series, uh, whether they're a webinar or whether they're a series I've done together, you'll pretty much click onto one part and then you'll be able to access each one of these parts uh, straight away and things really okay. So I would definitely go and watch them from the beginning and then kind of refresh them to actually uh, get to where you want to be right so what are we doing today we're doing the sales room and album design uh, a little bit of kind of a full-on session but um, we're, it, it's not too difficult I mean because we've kind of done all this step by step we don't really need to actually panic at this point because I've touched on things during the different kind of sections um, sales room obviously the most demanding you would think as far as the business is concerned. But in boudoir photography, uh, pretty much we're only gonna have a handful of products that by design that most clients are gonna buy. But of course, um, we're not just um, giving the client what we're expecting them to buy. We need to give them ambition as well. So there's no reason as well that we don't kind of look at the, the whole kind of um, wall art and kind of everything else that we're doing, including kind of quite plush albums, which we're going to cover today. Uh, the industry has got pretty much hooked on prints in a box, which is a bit of a shame, as well as obviously digital files and things. Um, but we want to kind of make sure that um, we kind of run all the way through to a full on in per person sale. So if you are doing an in person sale on the same day, obviously your edit and finish is gonna be slightly different than if the client was coming back in a week or two. I would still expect for um, there would be some basic edit and finish to a um, session before we get to the actual viewing. Even on the same day, I want something done. So obviously I get it that most of it is gonna be done in the raw. Um, I would prefer if the client could have at least a half hour, 40 minute kind of uh, break between the session itself and the obviously reveal of the images um, so we can actually uh, make sure that the client looks at their best no matter what. You'll often find clients who are not buying, but obviously the, with, the client, uh, with the photographers who haven't done the most effort, so if we've done the, li the liquify tool, skin smoothing, uh, and so on and so on, um, basically there's more of an opportunity for those um, clients to be buying without even thought and things ready. So what we're trying to cover in this session is the kind of the build up to the actual selling day itself, or to show you how quick it is if you are doing a same day viewing uh, within the hour, then you can actually still get things kind of done. So the edit finish and the preparing is going to be definitely be able to be done uh, in a 40 minute preparation between shooting, finishing the shoot and actually getting ready for the client to come in. There's going to be a slight problem if you're trying to do the likes of a slideshow with Animoto and an album app as well in the teaser for the client within the 40 minutes. If you could give me an hour between the session and the actual uh, slideshow, I can pretty much, uh, sorry, between the session finish and the actual start of the viewing, I could pretty much get it everything done within the hour, but obviously that's to do with flow and so on with it. We might have to go back to the images before going to print, because we might need to do a little bit more work, but we can get most of it done. So um, as far as um, images are concerned, uh, we basically want to be looking at uh, the kind of the raw kind of images. Um, this is one of the uh, workshop sessions that I did, um, but pretty much you'll find that these are all shot within an hour. I'm, I'm not going to go through all these today because it'll just take us forever to actually select all the images. And because they're a workshop, uh, style of image. I've also gone through all the basics of the lighting, the body positioning and the flow. Whereas obviously, once you've got a personal variety and style, you would just be shooting to those images straight away. So you'd, in other words, you'd be cutting out all of the, the, the time and just getting straight to the kind of the good images that you know is a part of your studio style. But when I'm doing a workshop, basically, um, 
uh, I've got to go to run a uh, run through the whole thing with it and things really so everything from the basic to the implied the quickie shoot uh, kind of a little bit more kind of fashion style for the younger client uh, as you're now seeing on screen with it um, multiple lights compared to a one light shoot and so on so as a rule what I'm looking to do is obviously select down the images now if that was the whole shoot uh, basically, um, I would have selected about 48 images, and from the 48 images, those are the ones that I'm going to present in front of the client within the hour or in a couple of days, couple of weeks' time, whatever I'm going to be doing. But they need to be representational of a look and a feel and a style. So the first thing that I need to do is finish as much as I can in RAW to avoid from going into Photoshop. It would only really be for a much fuller figure client that I would need to spend just that little bit more time finishing the image so she can actually look amazing. But the amazing looking, many of you are familiar now with Kels, our Kelsey, our lockdown model, as well as our, our model through the Photographer Academy of the past two or three years, five years in fact. Um, Kelsey's great because she's the girl next door as far as you know she's a, a, a bit of a gym bunny but not overdoes it she loves her figure she's an actress rather than a model she comes into model for us and everything else so she's more of an extra but again um, over the course of the years we've kind of created you know different kind of looks and feels but with some of the more adventurous photography we need a lot more work with the more basic imagery it's going to need a lot less work so if I just kind of just choose these top six images for a minute and we imagine the whole session would be done in a very very similar kind of way the first thing that I would be doing across all of the images that are the same so in other words these images I would be applying a preset to them now a preset I'm using bridge and camera raw you might be using Lightroom and camera raw whichever it doesn't matter whichever's best for you but I would want to be uh, using the likes of the presets and a preset that I've created to kind of make it look and feel like I want it to all right so again as soon as I hit this basically all of those images would have been now corrected um, if it was based on a studio one and I needed to add um, more or less soft softness to the image, uh, I would actually just go in and adjust the texture to the photographs. And then once I've done the basic adjustments to that selection of images, one at a time now I would go in and individually just adjust them to where I want to actually kind of finish this. So this is completely wrong. So I need to go in, white click onto the picker. In this case, pick on the bra. Now go in and actually add the whiteness or the brightness to the image. And pretty much you can guarantee if one is wrong, there's gonna be several wrong. So I can just go in and basically select the two, Alt S, and then that will actually sync them together. Then all I've gotta do is go into the next image and just see if I wanna actually change it lighter or brighter whatever it is with my particular boudoir styling I don't mind if I blow out a little bit of the detail on the actual higher light as long as it's a soft image next photograph here uh, kind of cropping rotating now I can want to select the images once more so uh, once more going into E uh, selecting onto the white balance but of course remember this is the slow part I'm doing here what I need to get into the habit for is using the likes of the studio sample um, kind of uh, uh, coloring the whole time with it. So work between your presets, then the fixes overall to the photograph, all right? Once I'm there, I'm pretty much done. And obviously if I had a black and white image as well, I would be doing a, a, a series in the variety of the black and white. Notice the only softness I'm applying is in tech texture. I tend to avoid the mid-tone clarity because that kind of gives it a bit of a, ha a hazy effect. But if you had somebody with very, very bad skin, you could go in and add a minus in the clarity as well. And that would obviously change the whole thing. Once all these images are done, all four 48 photographs shouldn't take you any more once you've selected the images. And when I'm um, editing uh, boudoir photographs from RAW, the first thing I do is actually not start at the beginning of the shoot, I start at the end of the shoot. Because usually the best photograph of any set setup 
is going to be one of the last ones. So I can pretty much, you know, if I kind of do some shots where she stood at a window, the images are going to be better at the end of that part of the shoot compared to at the beginning of the shoot where I'm breaking her in and things ready. Okay, so once these are done now, all I would do is actually click on the down arrow. They would have already been renamed and they would have had the metadata apply to these images before they even get to this stage. Um, if I cancel that for a minute and just press um, done, it won't have adjusted them. But the first thing I need to do is before they can go into the processing, they have to have a, a, a file number for that client, but they have to have the metadata replaced with the Mark Cleghorn. This would apply all my copyright information, um, the date of the shoot, but it would also then, while I've just done that, I would go in and basically add in the keywords, which would be that client's names as well, and obviously the copyright information of 2001 and so on. Um, so they have to have that done, and it takes sec seconds, as you just saw, before I bring them into RAW. And what you should do is create yourself a bit of a, um, um, a master uh, of your metadata, so you can just click onto it and it's done straight away. So do one for boudoir, do one for family, whatever you're going to do. So uh, because I clicked done before, it kept all the adjustments that I made. All I would do now is click on the down arrow, and I won't need to rename here because they would have already been renamed uh, beforehand. I would just select where they're going to be saved, uh, and then basically from, from there, they would actually be saved to a folder, and they'll be saved as a JPEG file. I'm not going to do that now. There's no, uh, there's no need because you'll all save images to your own file. But basically, it would be done. And um, if it was a very big shoot, so perhaps it was a client who'd gone for the creative kind of boudoir, um, so it's a two to three hour shoot, and I had a lot more images, then obviously a little bit more kind of selection would have gone on. So uh, it would just, you know, for instance, if I just bring one of them live for a minute, um, even though there's some basic adjustments gone in here, I would need to actually now go in and start to, because this is a, a, a kind of more advanced kind of client, I will go in and start to actually paint around the images, making them lighter and, dar and darker. Depends on what we're actually trying to achieve. Clicking on pluses then to actually go in and add more information. Perhaps painting up the um, shoes around the tights. But really what I'm doing is painting light onto the image itself, yeah? But in little kind of pockets, just like we would do the dodging and burning within a photograph and so on with it. So ev everything here needs to be refined, especially if the client is actually paying for a much more extravagant shoot and things ready. And in the same, uh, same way, it couldn't go through a processing unless the actual metadata had been done. Okay. Once that's done, it takes about uh, a second and a half to two seconds tops, depends on your processor, to process an image from RAW to, J, uh, to JPEG. So absolutely no reason whatsoever not to be shooting a RAW file with all these fine adjustments that we can make. Once that would be done, of course, they would be processing themselves and uh, we would end up with the kind of the variety of images that we've got here just to give, uh, to give a guide. And once we're at that session kind of stage, in other words, they've been pro processed, each of the images has got their uh, metadata applied to them, as you can see running down the side and things really, we're pretty much uh, at around about half an hour uh, tops uh, from the, the, the client. So I'm about 10 minutes away, possibly from going into the viewing room with a boudoir client as a rush, but I haven't actually done anything in Photoshop and so on. If I needed to do things in Photoshop, is there an image here? Um, she's got such a great figure, she doesn't really need any work done. I've got to find one though. Let me just uh, go and choose Kelsey JFR. Oh, there you go. Okay, there's one there. All right, so if this image here, if we bring this into um, uh, Photoshop now, yeah, obviously with Photoshop running in the background, it's quick, easy to uh, upload anyway. Um, obviously, once this had kind of gone into uh, Photoshop itself, yeah, 
Um, it doesn't have to go through RAW if it's a JPEG. It can go open straight up into Photoshop itself. So a RAW has to go through ACR, then it can be saved or opened in Photoshop or both. I usually actually from RAW, I process it to a JPEG file, quality 10, and then I'll open them up in Photoshop to apply the different looks and feels and obviously my kind of um, um, palette of kind of actions and so on to actually kind of skin smooth and so on. However, if we look at the likes of the what I would um, do to a client as far as um, what filters, uh, this is a perfect example here, hasn't quite sucked in enough. That's my fault, not hers. So I need to basically um, just uh, go in and liquefy this part of the tummy. I could, if I want to be fussy, liquefy this little bit of the back and so on. Uh, and if it was an Instagram, they would, you know, influencer and they wanted to actually use it, yes, when you do a bit more work with it, but they'd be paying for that as well. So um, filter, li liquefy, where possible if you're doing a same day viewing, you, you're really, or same session viewing, you're going to have little time to do any liquefying, uh, but it's not as hard as you might think. The first thing would be is to use a slightly bigger brush than you might imagine and do it in sections so it's not going to kind of warp up too much. Okay, and then obviously go in and basically shrink down the actual brush then to do a slightly different areas. The bigger the brush, the easier it is to actually do the big changes going on and things, okay? Um, obviously, with the kind of the wind uh, the window here where it gets stretched, we could have gone in and froze that part. We could froze here. You can watch the Academy, what I mean by that and things really. But once I'm done, uh, basically just going to press OK, and you can see the difference in in there straight away with it and things really. Okay, so uh, again, think about what you are trying to um, – really show off to the client but you can see because of the kind of the the windows behind it's kind of warped all that up so it need a little bit of work but would the client really see it probably not and things really but once they're done that would then be saved off as another file and it would usually go through a skin softening which uh, you've seen before which would be control j and then going into filter blur and gaussian blur Soften the whole image to just take the skin, skin quality away. Then just turn in that layer into the likes of a uh, screen or a soft light, okay? Uh, screen, just lowering down the opacity about 30, 40%. And if I didn't want it to apply to the whole image, of course, I would just paint out the information or paint in the information using the likes of a mask. Then it'd be flat and then it'd be saved. Okay, so again, a lot of work, especially if you're going to be doing the in-person sales in a few weeks' time. Um, otherwise, try and get done as much as you can for that kind of instant view and at least add a softness and a glow to the image. And as I said, do, uh, do that with the likes of tech, uh, texture in ACR uh, to actually mac uh, maximize that variety. So then when we come back into here, um, if we're going to work in a slideshow and create the album app as well, I would usually bring them all into Photoshop and run the 2500 um, action. What this would then do is reduce all the original files um, via a copy. It would create a 2500 um, series of images. Okay, so it would copy them. Sorry, it would um, resize it in batch resize in Photoshop copy it to a 2500 folder on the desktop, then those would be actually copied into the client files. Those are the ones then. So a couple of minutes spent there will save a huge amount of time in the likes of Animo, Animoto and the likes of Sticky Albums to upload the images into both of them at the same time. So by just allowing Photoshop to run an, act, an action to reduce them and create a new file based on a new size and then uploading those images it allows me to actually work quite fast right at that point then you know it's going to probably take about another five to six minutes to create an animoto using the master that i have and using the likes of a um a sticky album as well which is the app design and things just watch on some of the other um films that we do to kind of grasp what i'm on about if you're not quite sure but for the next stage, uh, as far as the viewing is concerned, um, I use Fundy Designer.
okay and i actually like to create an album for the client now as much as um, many of you will like to just sell a matted print i'm showing this just on the webcam for now if that can be seen jay yeah um this is a, a product from the likes of sim imaging comes in a great little kind of um, linen style of box holds up to 20 images for me as well uh, in this in this case um, i can either have 10 or 20 photographs in there uh, as far as the look is concerned buried at the bottom as well is my usb okay so there's my usb and it's got all my logo on there and everything else with things that matches so i've got a complete product here uh, as far as the client now um, if you're going to offer a same day session, a same day sale, um, I would still encourage a client coming backwards to pick up. Um, I don't like to actually allow them to go away with the product actually on the day. I much prefer to uh, to kind of get them coming back. Um, however, uh, it's it's a great product, and obviously it's one of those that we can show on the day. Um, when you hear photographers talk about a reveal wall. Um, that is what they usually kind of show in is going to be a print in a box. The biggest problem with that is that's what you tend to always just sell. And of course, my ambition is to sell a much, much bigger product to the client. All right. So it's kind of looking at what we're trying to achieve. So um, I like to create a album design uh, ready for the client because this is the same software that I'm going to be using for the actual, um, uh, sorry, for the actual viewing itself with it and things really. All right. So uh, what we can do from here is do two things in once, especially if you're working in a viewing room that allows you a couple of minutes before you start the viewing to create the album story. However, if I began from scratch, so in other words, I just got a file new for a minute, new project. And we just um, so boudoir business. Um, the slowest part in this is going to be uploading the images. Okay, and just uh, wait for it to come in. Um, I would still use though the fully processed images, not the twenty five hundred. And the reason being on that is that if I want to, I can output from Fuddy to the likes of um wall art and everything else within things really jay that's just going to take a couple of minutes kind of uploading those images or about a minute any questions come through first that you want me to chat about quickly uh yeah we got some we could do quickly um what do you do with the images the client doesn't see and how long do you keep them for okay so the first pass if you haven't watched my workflow on anything my first pass, you'll know that anything is not selected, it tends to be deleted straight straight away. That's my instantly, they're no use. So I, I usually star rate them uh, um, a one star or three star, whatever it is. But technically, once I've deleted the no stars, the three stars are re uh, reduced down to zero stars straight away. And then I'll go through a second pass. It's in the second or even the third pass at times that are there, that they're the ones that I am going to keep in a folder uh, in case a client was referred to something or I need eyes or I need a better butt or I need a better boob or whatever it would be to do with uh, the kind of the client shoot. But as a rule, the only images that a client is going to see is the images I allow them to see. So you can see how quick that was to upload into the album there. Uh, All right. Before, before so, you go on, sorry, just to clarify, uh, 2500 means pixels in the longest length pixels correct yeah and to do that to create yourself a um a batch you just go into file or automate and batch but you record this in an action and then if you go into the uh, the action that you choose then it's there okay so to create the size size you want file or automate and basically God, it's so long since I've done it now. It's image size, scripts, scripts, image processor. Bloody hell, I've just had a file automate batch. Fit image. Duh. Hang on a minute. It's because I didn't have an image in. 
one showing it was grayed out so file or the automate and fit image so when you create your action to begin with you can see here it's on 2000 yeah um if i go to 2500 and then 2500 again it, it does it to the largest size so just press ok to that and then it does it within the ac action it would then go file save as yeah and it would take it to the desk uh, the desktop and if there was a 2500 desktop the uh, there's not so let's create one so that will go to 2500 that's all it says on mine <laughs> is 25 well oh. there is one there 2500 how come i didn't see that then my glasses there you go and all it just could go safe all right and it doesn't matter at this stage if you even want to lower it down to the likes of seven that's a quicker upload smaller file size again we close it within the action as well and then if i just go into that 2500 you can see that image is there so though this is the size of image that i would have actually now put in there compared to the full resolution file does that help yeah that's great mate thank you well okay so um we've talked about how to kind of choose the image and kind of going through the photographs to the client just doing through one at a time selecting one stars and five stars and kind of going through the photographs so again we can work in the slideshow in exactly the same way uh, so if somebody said that was their fav uh, the favorite image hitting the numeric five would add it in the right arrow goes to the next image they love that one as well so that would be a three star and so on but the main thing really what i want to do is go through all the photographs where we're going to end up with a series of images that they absolutely kind of love um, because i'm only ever going to show the client their best of the best of the best so when i start to filter out these images then during the course of the viewing and you've seen me do this live before um, straight away okay well we've got um uh, four images that you uh, you love the best um, is is there a real favorite here so i'll just show you those images again so that's the first one that's the next one that's the next one and there's the next image is there a preference there oh you like that one there okay so let's look at that one first um and then that's where we would go into the kind of the image on on the wall okay i never go to as a rule of thumb a side-by-side -side comparison I, I want to avoid that because um, if if we do it, it means that um, we're, we're going to actually be saying that one isn't as good as another, and I'm not trying to do that at all, okay? So uh, again, as far as that is concerned, what I really want to do here um, is once we've kind of gone through the viewing stage, which we click onto the uh, viewing module at the top, yeah, just go to a new gallery, and then we'll go to... Um, sim imaging or one vision just go next this would be boudoir uh, business and press finish obviously that would be the client's name and then at this stage we can start to obviously choose the right kind of background that i want to do now with boudoir whenever i'm showing any room room sets the only ones that we show are bedroom sets. It's just one of those things that I, I do, okay? You can choose your own thing. And then uh, basically, once I'm there, I just come back to my images and go, okay, so that's the, fa uh, the favorite image. Yeah, we would just, just go in and create that in the size that we want it to. And this would be um 30 high by 20 what's the other way around mark click on you do you donut 20 by 30 okay now look how small that looks on a bedroom wall okay so if a client says well i'm not really looking for anything big you can see straight away it doesn't look big if they decide oh can i um see that one other one instead then you can start to see so when i'm selling big art i still want the ambition of going big and if i don't shoot creative colorful dynamic images that look great clients are never going to buy uh, buy big with it 
So it's thinking about what will look great on a wall and what will look great of them and things really. So there is this kind of um, mentality when I shoot as well, that I've got to shoot something for the wall. And I've got to obviously shoot for the actual album design of the house. So what I want to be able to do, uh, do though, is basically uh, suggest to the client that all of the images are going to fit into one of our albums. Now you can see already one vision imaging and sim imaging are my chosen kind of fav favorite labs for, al uh, for album design. If I just click on one vision for a minute, and then I just go into, uh, I don't know, the hardcover book. Let's just go with that one. Hardcover printed book. Let's go to 1212. Next again. So this is uh, KR. Good one. I do apologize if you can hear some drilling going on outside. It's they're doing some work over the other side of the road. So uh, as far as the filters concerned, there's no kind of filtering here uh, as far as the uh, images are concerned. What we want to go through is an automated design. And this is really going to make it nice and quick for me. So in front of the client, I wanted to show them how good and how fantastic this can physically be in its own right with it. So straight uh, straight away, um, without any real work, yes, I've got to move some images around between spreads and so on, but what we're doing is a very, very quick album design in front of the client. So I'd much prefer to actually show the album off before I even go to the print box, because a print box is a print box and they can use them, share them, put them up, put them in their own frames, whatever they want to do. An, al an album is a memory to last a lifetime, really. And, and that's how we would kind of really uh, show it off to and things really. So uh, again, as far as uh, image design and everything else is concerned, it's really down to you how you want to do it. You can see I can just go, well, in fact, I want that image to come across to here and change. All of a sudden, it completely changes the album design and layout. Um, so I don't have to do a huge amount of work. So whereas Fundy will do a great album design straight away, in fact, I'm pretty much done there, you know. I've corrected everything. The only thing I would need need to do is just double click into that one image and just move the uh, the, the the likes of the feet along. Except that's a horizontal image rather than a vertical image with it and things really. And obviously, there's no kind of feet left. So let me just go into there. It's pretty much done, you know. And obviously, if you kind of go, OK, well, that, that, uh, that was your favorite image of the butt. Why don't we bring that one into there? Yeah. Uh, in fact, why don't we um, bring these ones across to this album spread as well? And why don't we actually bring that one up into this album design? So in front of the client, I can then actually give them a different style of um, uh, presentation straight away with it as far as the different design ideas the layout ideas <coughs> kind of just giving it a full um, a full spread but pretty much in front of the client within the viewing experience I can give them a real experience of buying that is absolutely essential for me is to make sure the client is coming through and not just going through a box of prints any questions there Jay uh, there was a question that came on I didn't uh, earlier. Um, I think you just kind of covered it, but you noticed that you saved JPEG quite early in your process. Are you ever saving all the edits to PSD or TIFF files or, or, or resave to JPEG once you've edited? Yeah, so in other words, um, if we go back into Photoshop for a minute, I don't think there'll be anything in that folder because it is a demonstration folder in Bridge, sorry. So if we look down here, um, if there's anything with a W or an F, it, it, with a W, you would see it was a PSD file. That means it's working anyway, yeah? If it's an F, it would be back to a JPEG flat or F as a PSD. But a W means a working file. If I finish the working file, but I think I want to keep the PSD file, it would be renamed to the file name and it would change from a W to an F. And that would be the only time that I would actually keep that PSD file. Um, but almost there's no reason for me to keep a, a, a TIFF file nowadays at all because the JPEG quality is so, so good. I know we are throwing detail away, but we're not talking 1998 here and uh, 
I, I did, even going back to then, um, every time you resave over the save JPEG, it's it's losing, it's a lossy quality, yeah? But really, you had to say, over save over the image 10 times to, to even see there was a difference with it, and that was then, and, and today's kind of software is way, way better than ever before and things really, but uh, no, I hardly use a TIFF file at all now, except for commercial photography. Anything else, Jake? Uh, no, that's all our questions I've got for you. Brilliant. So, um, I mean, if you think what we've just done, we've done the edit, the finish, and the prepared. As far as the slideshow and the app, we need to decide if we've got enough time to be doing those. If 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 we do, you know, I'm I'm really using what well, button. I'm using Animo Animoto for the slideshow. As far as the album app is concerned, I'm using Sticky Albums for that one. Um, the album design is done in exact same soft uh, the software as I use for the viewing, which is Fundy Designer. So I'm all the kind of the main things are going to be done as far as images for the wall, album design is concerned, and the actual selling pro process are all going to take place within one piece of software itself. And it's great to be able to actually show a client album design straight away as well. As far as the products, we touched on this before, but we'll kind of recover it again. Uh, as far as digital, I'm expecting to sell digitals of 10, 20, and 30 or all. In print boxes, I want to sell 10, 20, 30 or all. In album design, I'm looking for the higher end, which is going to be 995 to 2000 pounds. The wall art is mul multiple small images or very big canvas. Uh, collections and packages are going to be from 750 to 2500 pounds. And as far as we can offer a payment plan, so we can do that anyway, and obviously makes that a much, much bigger sale. So that's the kind of the, the main focus in on the products that I'm looking to sell. And that's pretty much us done. So uh, remember, as far as the kind of the products and the pricing is concerned, um, you just don't want to be using the product cost cal uh, calculator forever. You want to be looking at how much you can physically charge for that product as your business grows and as a specialist you should be able to charge a lot more than somebody's just doing a bit of boudoir whatever it be but again even though we need products that are affordable we need to make sure that we're um, having um, uh, products that are really celebrating the image so in other words like i, al I always say never design a price list for 20 percent of your clients you're always pr uh, producing your um, price list for 80% of the client or at least the 60% of the average spender. The 20% at the top is the golden kind of egg client. We, we kind of ignore those and we ignore the 20% at the bottom is the no or the low sale. So the 60% six, uh, in the middle is really what it, uh, the business is re revolving around. So remember to edit hard to sell more, finish ready for, ba uh, for basic sale, but for boudoir photography, add some glow to the image no matter what and create for viewing and, uh, and an instant up, upsell the likes of an owl album, the likes of a sticky album, the likes of an Animoto slide, uh, the slideshow with it. Uh, and obviously as far as the print box is concerned, I gather that is a standardized product. So we've covered shooting and styling. We've covered, we've covered lighting for boudoir photography. We've talked about the props and the posing that are best used. We've talked about and created a website for marketing as well. We were talking about dressing the client for success to maximize the look and the figure and so on. We looked at the products and pri at the pricing that we just recovered then, that we looked at a shoot using a hotel, we looked at a fuller figure clientele, we looked at the, young, uh, the younger clientele as well, and now we just touched on the sales room. So in the last 10 weeks, we've basically created 10 steps to start in a boudoir photography business, whether adding it into your photography or um actually creating a business from scratch and things question time jay anything else you want to cover or anything you think i've missed out and i should have uh no we've had a few more questions in uh and then we have had somebody ask us if we could just share a little bit more info on experience um how many images are in an album or is it the 48 that you show the client yeah, for uh, the 48 images, I basically want to show a client where possible for 48 completely different images. Completely is the key word there. Uh, I think this was in the processing. What did you mean by adding a glow? 
Um, so the likes of um, softness or a, a kind of um, a, a glow, a softness. Uh, and that uh, you use that, you you have a preset for that anyway, don't you, or an action? Yeah, I've got a, ver a variety of different ac actions, but if I was having to do an instant view, I would need to do it in the likes of uh, a preset instead. Um, unless I knew that ev everything was going to be going through the likes of the batch back at sorry the the batch action for the resizing so i am going to go and create the likes of the animoto and everything else with it then uh, pretty much i can press the act uh, the action to add a glow um to o over save the file to another location first and then reduce it down in size and save it to another location again so if you are going to be touching every everything through Photoshop. Um, I do want to keep the original JPEG that I developed. It's hardly any size at all. Then I want to actually add the processing actually on top. Well, um, what resolution, if the images are going on a stick, or do you downscale just for social media? Uh, no, well, I give them both, in fact. I give a client both the full resolution for print. They also get a gallery from me that they can actually order directly from a, a professional gallery and a professional print. I do explain to the client that they're a little bit more expensive, but because you're buying the digital, basically I've, I've had my profit. So now when you're ordering from my professional lab, um, we, we just have an administration or kind of um, um, profit that is within it. So you're not going to be charged the same as our price list. Uh, and that's it, mate. And just, also, sorry, sorry, and that, that was it just for if we could just share some more information on the experience group. Okay, um, so the first, uh, the first things first, uh, we've got such an amazing um, offer running at present with both One Vision uh, sorry, with Digital Lab and Sim Imaging, I believe One Vision is going to come on board very, very soon to do with um, our offers concerned. The uh, experience group uh, was designed as a business development and marketing company for photographers. Um, pretty much, if you head over to the experience.co.uk, you'll get to the front page here. And uh, if you just kind of click on to the about, about us or more information, uh, you can either download the um, uh, brochure and so on with it but if you uh, get through to the join now page this will pretty much explain um, uh, all the information to do with the experience in the summer of last year we brought forward forward um, in the summer of last year we brought forward our 2021 plans to bring light on board okay so we weren't planning to launch light until january of this year but because of obviously the lockdown and the pandemic we knew that a lot of photographers would need us more than ever so we we gave an opportunity and we launched light straight away so light will basically cost you about 30 odd pound a, a week however if you're a um a customer of one vision of sim lab or digital sorry sim imaging or digital lab there is an offer running jay no yes so um sim has just launched the um the same as the digital lab offer so um, it, it's uh, 50 percent off isn't it is there do you know what the i don't know what the code is to get to the page Oh, there you go. It's Digital Lab with a capital D and the rest is lowercase. But if you come onto here, you can join Experience Lite for only £900 for the whole year. And that gives you seven legacy campaigns, uh, designs as far as the um, uh, look and the feel that you want. So brochures, price lists, blah, blah, blah is all kind of there. Uh, you get training from me on the business front once um, every other week. You also have our Experience Restart Pro uh, program that runs for six weeks every eight weeks. Uh, Jay does exactly the same with his social media marketing as well. Uh, you'll also have a social media marketing with Jay once every other week as well and things really. Uh, in addition, you also get some benefits from the likes of all our trade suppliers in one way or another, but mainly in discounts, obviously. Um, and, and again, it's just really down to what you want, okay? But um, you have to be uh, um, an account holder of some kind with Digital Lab, with Sim Imaging, and with um, 
uh, digital lab. So they mean the more sim image in digital lab and one and one vision. Okay. So as long as you've got um, as long as you buy stuff from them, even if you're just a new photographer and you set up an account with either one of those, you are, you can apply theoretically through a back door to join the experience group for 900 quid for the whole year. You can even split it on a monthly basis. I don't know what that is, Jay. Do you know what it is? He's gone. Oh, sorry. No, I don't know what it is. But... Uh, do you know what? It's 75 quid a month. So um, that's how little it will cost you to join the experience at present with it. Uh, so what you get 20 business training sessions by weekly from me, 20 social media marketing sessions from Jay by weekly as well. Quarterly online training sessions. Uh, that's a group thing. Experience like Facebook community. You go onto there straight away. Experience uh, seven legacy campaigns. Discount with all our trade par par partners, including uh, digital lab one vision and sim imaging as well as kaleidoscope of course marketing pack from us the experience awards experience qualifications literature design and teleplay package and the uh, use of our interest free option as well with it things really um so uh, again loads and loads and loads of things there for you to actually really benefit from and it's pretty much a no-brainer to be honest um when you think for 900 quid what you're going to get from us you'll you'll definitely create yourself 30, 30 grand's worth of turn a uh, turnover if you apply even the most basics of things that both jay and i do for you in uh, in year one brilliant mate um, and we should just say that uh, if you want any more information i have put the link in the chat panel you get it from us directly as well but talk to laura our business development manager so her email is laura at the experience.co.uk the phone number is in the chat panel you'll also find it on the website and how to actually get in touch with her there or give us a call at the studio and we can put you in touch with her thanks very much jay we haven't told them what's coming next week i was just about to do exact exactly that before we finish so um i've basically put i put together uh, for you a commercial 10 uh, 10 steps now okay so if we go to the I logged out. No, I haven't. So if we just come through, you can see here on the um, uh, what's going on. We've got a business live webinar, 10 steps to start in a commercial photography business. Um, and so uh, we're running that for another 10 weeks as well, whether you're adding it in or you're kind of starting from fresh and everything else with it and things ready. So we just thought these 10 steps things would be good. So we're going to cover what's my niche. Light, uh, lighting for commercial photography, the brief and quote uh, quoting for the job, uh, website and how to create one that will be attractive to a commercial booker, uh, and obviously the marketing that's behind the scene with that, uh, using and uh, why to um, invest into assistance, even if they're on a daily rate with you and how to best, best use them, pricing the day and pricing the job, studio uh, or loca uh, location setting up your business to work with either then we're going to look at the shoot on location then we're going to look at a shoot in studio and then we're going to be looking at the sales and images use uh, usage rights of what you should set yourself up right with copyright and everything else with things ready and that kicks off from the 15th of february which is next monday so uh you should be able to actually get up involved with us so uh remember we're kick uh, kicking off with what's my niche uh, in next week there'll be a slightly short a shorter business live but i'm around for questions uh, uh to kind of follow on with and things really so you can get as interactive as you want well That's thank it, you Jay. mate cheers bud pleasure thanks uh, thanks everybody take care